external demand management is about what we can do to influence the demand placed upon us by our customers. What we can actively do to reduce its variation and also increase the visibility of the demand that's coming to us. Now you might have thought that the demand our customers place upon us is outside our control, but there really is a lot we can do to influence it. So here's a list of some of those points we can do. The first one is to reduce promotions. If our product service is already up and running and has a fundamentally stable demand, then maybe adding promotions is creating a big surge in demand is the variation. Many supermarkets and supermarket products, now rather than the permanent excitement of, of uh, promotions, promise everyday low prices. Now, having said that, point two might seem a little odd. Price variation, active price variation, can also be used to smooth demand. Think of hotels and airlines. Their capacity is basically fixed, and they will offer cheap tickets to those who book early and expensive ones to those who book late. There's certainly a bit of profit maximisation in there for them, but it's also smoothing their demand. The third one is to incentivize smaller, more frequent deliveries to our customers. Especially if your customer's another business, and you know, business to business sales are common. Ask them, ask them if they really want a delivery of three months' worth of stock all at once. Or maybe they would also prefer smaller, regular deliveries. More than just asking them, we can even incentivize these regular orders rather than incentivizing big orders. Perhaps when you've been shopping on Amazon, you've seen the bit where it says subscribe and save. If you sign up to buy your shampoo every month, you get 5% off. For Amazon, that foresight, the knowledge of their demand, is valuable and they pass on some of that discount to you. Next, we have information sharing. Maintain transparent, proactive relationships with your, with your customers. The more communications and visibility we can get from them, the more likely we can see the real demand, which is usually much smoother than the actual orders we get, especially, again, when our customers are other businesses, another step in the longer supply chain. This communication with your suppliers and with your customers is, is super important to avoid things like the bullwhip effect, which is a supply chain management phenomena where demand gets amplified, a bit like Chinese whispers, as you go up further and further away from the actual demand. So communicate with your suppliers, with your customers to get closer understanding to the true demand. This links on to inventory and policy planning. A very popular way is even having your vendors manage your own inventory or having your customer let you manage their inventory of the parts you supply to them. Vendor managed inventory, if we're supplying another business customer, could mean that we take responsibility for them always having enough of whatever it is we sell them in stock and we choose when to send them a bit more. They just pay to always have what they want when they want it. Taking this a step further, we have collaborative planning and forecasting to do the reordering scheduling with our customers and with our suppliers. They will appreciate it too for the same reason. The most extreme and total form of collaboration with your customers is to buy them out. If they're another business selling on to another business to ultimately the end customer, if you buy them out, you're one step closer to the true demand of the actual end customer. Now, yes, I know the last point. Few of us are in the position where we can just go, ah, oh, that's much easier. I'll just buy out my customer. But it gives you an insight into why that kind of thing is considered and the kind of extra value it can bring to a business by buying their own customers.